Hello again, this is Amos from Moog Music, and we're delving even deeper into the Moog Minotaur synthesizer. And today I'll be showing you how to go under the hood in the Minotaur editor and edit the advanced features that aren't available on the panel itself. So if you see over here in the Minotaur software, this is the front panel, which does replicate the functions of the hardware. But you can go over here to the under the hood panel, and you'll see a whole host of additional features which we can go into in greater detail now. So in the oscillator section, you have additional controls of note sync and VCO2 beat. And VCO2 beat is the beat frequency between oscillator one and oscillator two. Basically it works like a ultra fine tune detuning control for oscillator two, which is independent of the regular frequency control. Here you go with two oscillators in near unison. And the closer you get to unison, the more static the sound becomes. You hear the harmonics of each oscillator in a more or less fixed relationship to one another. And what you may want is to detune those just a little bit. You can do that here with the VCO2 beat control. And you can hear that that's just a very, very small amount of detuning happening. The other oscillator control is note sync, and note sync is extremely useful because as you detune the oscillators, they run independently of one another. In this case, they're free running, which means that if you turn on a note somewhere in the note cycle, you may have the oscillators exactly in phase with each other, exactly out of phase, or somewhere in between, and that relationship changes as you play notes. What I have is essentially a simple bass drone with some repeating notes. And with note sync off, they all sort of blur together. And with note sync on, you can hear a really crisp attack to each note because the phase of the oscillators is being reset to zero on the attack. So without note sync, it sounds like this. And then we'll add note sync and we get this. We also have parameters for keyboard tracking for the filter. By default, it's set to about 50% tracking, 100% is in the middle, and you can turn the keyboard tracking all the way up to 200% for a sort of stretched harmonic effect. With the resonance turned all the way up, you can use the filter as an independent oscillator, and filter keyboard tracking allows the filter to track one-to-one -one musically, or a more or less. And the filter follows glide and pitch bend as well, so you can have full nuanced performances just using the filter. You also have velocity sensitivity for the filter, which is controlled from the under the hood panel, and that can go from zero to 100%, and it scales actually the filter envelope amount. So if you turn up velocity sensitivity to the filter, and you turn up the filter EG amount, you can have very nice velocity controlled filtery sounds. And you can dial that in however you like. There's also velocity sensitivity for the volume. So you can have fully velocity sensitive sounds whose loudness and brightness is controlled by the dynamics of your playing. Additionally, you have control over a number of key and trigger modes, which control dynamically how the instrument responds to your playing. Legato on means that the envelope will not re-trigger if you play overlapping notes, but you will get a new envelope anytime you play disconnected notes, and so that gives you a very punchy, classic, sort of Minimoog style sound. And you can change that to Legato off, where every note has the same attack, regardless of whether they overlap or not. There's another trigger mode, originally found on the little fatty, which is EG reset. In EG reset mode, the beginning of the attack forces the envelope all the way to the start of its attack phase, as opposed to re-triggering from the level at which it was when you played a new note. And sonically, that means that you can have very soft swelling sounds, like so. And additionally, you have your standard key priorities. The default is last note priority, which means that whatever the most recent key you press is, that's the one that'll play. 
and it doesn't matter whether you're holding a high note or a low note, you can bounce between a held note and any, any note that you happen to play. Legacy modes are low note and high note priority. The original Mini Moog was low note priority, and what that means is that you can hold a high note and play lower notes, but you can't do the reverse. If you play a low note, it takes priority, and it's the only one you'll hear. High note is the reverse. Some older Japanese synths were like this. We also have a number of cool tricks in the glide module. There is not just one type of glide and not just glide on and off, but you have three different glide shapes that control the way in which the pitch glides from one note to another. And you also have a legato glide mode, which is very nice for sequences because it'll automatically glide notes that overlap. The start of one note happens before the end of another note, and it will snap from pitch to pitch on disconnected notes. And so that sounds a little bit like this, with legato glide on and the glide turned up. Like so. And the different glide shapes, they're called linear constant rate, linear constant time, and exponential. And the first two, linear constant rate and time, Linear constant rate is similar to the Voyager in that you set a certain glide rate, and if you play notes that are close together, it's a quick glide. If you play notes that are far apart, it takes a long time because it's traveling at a constant rate. And so that gives you something like this. And notes that are farther apart takes longer. Linear constant time, it takes the same amount of actual time to make any glide of any duration. So you set how long you want the glide time to be and it's the same regardless of how far apart the notes are. The glide rate is effectively faster the farther it has to travel. And then exponential is akin to the original Taurus 1 glide, where it starts out fast and then slows down as it approaches the destination. And that gives you a kind of a rubbery, organic, uh, very interesting sound. As you've seen by now, there are a lot of powerful techniques that can be unlocked using the editor in combination with the Minotaur itself. And so I hope you'll take some of these techniques and go out there and make some awesome music. Thanks again.